Alright guys, welcome back to the series. So from this point onwards, we're going to have a look at how to repurpose existing circuits. This is to give the majority of people a better chance at being able to use electricity without having an extensive knowledge of exactly how it works. It can be a little bit confusing at first, but like I mentioned in the first couple of episodes where I covered the basic functions of the components, it's really just about having some basic understanding and then kind of building from there. If you can look at a particular circuit, figure out what's actually happening, then you'll have a much better chance of uh, getting it to work correctly or perhaps repurposing it like we're going to have a look at. So there's going to be a link in the description below to this circuit. Now this is just a segment of a clock circuit that Cracker Jack designed. Uh, the only change that I've made is instead of using a splitter, I'm just using a couple of electrical branches. Now, I covered the reason why in my previous couple of episodes, uh, but it really doesn't matter which you use. It's just a personal preference thing. The main reason that I do it is that you may not have a large supply of electricity coming into your base, so you want to be conservative on how much you're using in a particular circuit. Electrical branches enable you to program how much you're diverting, which means you can kind of control uh, how much is being used and there's none wasted whatsoever. So let's get into this one. So I'm just gonna hook it up first. All I'm going to do is start by taking this electrical branch at the top here, running it down to the toggle on feature here. I'm going to take the toggle on feature of this one and run it all the way over to the power out of the blocker. This output of this timer is going to run to the block pass through and then the power in of this one is going to come all the way down to this branch on the electrical branch. The power in is going to the power out of this electrical branch and then we're going the output to there. Now all we have to do is get our power source here Connect it. And voila. We've hooked it up. Now I know I might have rushed through that, but that was kind of the point of the first couple of episodes, was to explain what is going on. Now I will go a little bit in depth to what is going on here a little bit later, but like I said, there's going to be a link in the description below to Cracker Jack's video. Hopefully you can figure out what he's doing there and how it's working, but I, again, I will explain. So, we're going to turn it on, and now this is going to go into its loop. However, we just need to disconnect a couple of cables so we can actually program the timers. You can't actually program any of the timers unless they actually already have power. So, I'm going to take out the toggle features. So when they turn off now, they won't automatically turn back on. I'm going to hold down E. Now, this right hand side one, just for the purpose of this video, I'm going to program to 5 seconds. Now in Cracker Jack's video, they're all programmed to 1 second. Now this is to create a pulse every second to work for the clock. We're doing something a little bit different. This one on the left hand side, I'm going to set to 20 seconds. So now I'm going to hook this back up. I'm going to take the branch out, come all the way back down, power out of here, into the toggle on. So now you can see the right hand side one stays on for five seconds. And when the left hand side one expires after its 20 second time, the whole cycle starts again. Now you're asking, how is this useful? Well, let's move on to the second part of the video 
and I'll explain. All right, so let's have a look at what's actually going on here. So we've got our source of power, and it's coming into the electrical branches, which we covered in the last two episodes. We have our power ring coming here, and we have these two outlets here. The branch out is the one that we can configure here, which we just have set to two, and it is leading its power source to the power in of the blocker. Now, we only need two coming out of this branch because the blocker will use one when our power is allowed to flow, and then it just sends the leftover unit of one around to the toggle on feature, which is the bare minimum that is required to use it correctly. So, speaking of which, we've also got obviously the timers here, which have their power source going in. We've got the toggle on feature connected on both of them so they can automatically reset each other. And then we have the output here on both of them. So essentially when this one is on for 20 seconds, it will block the pass through on this blocker. So when it expires, it is no longer stopping the flow of power through, which is already determined that it's coming from here. So once that timer expires, it sends its pulse of power all the way around, turns this timer on, which lasts for five seconds. So while this timer is on, it's outputting power to here, and then this is turning this timer back on. So it's resetting that 20 seconds therefore blocking pass through here again. Now, what is this extra electrical branch for? This is just to give us two more outlets, which we need. We needed the power going into here. Then we needed the branch out just to power this timer, which consumes one and then uses one or passes through one while it's on, which is enough to activate the block pass through here. Then the rest of the power is going into this electrical input and out here. Now, you might be confused just a little bit at this point, but try and keep up. Why would we not just connect this output straight to here? Well, if you watch Cracker Jack's video, you'd understand that this circuit now needs to actually connect to something else, which is why we have the power out on the electrical branch here. So hopefully that made sense as to what's actually going on in this circuit, and gives you a better idea of what's happening and exactly when. So I'm just gonna switch it back on and let's have a look at what's happening. So I switch it on. Now both timers automatically activate. This timer is now going to expire. Look what happens when this timer expires in about seven seconds, this light will go off, meaning power can go through, this timer goes on, and it sends its pulse of power, and this timer automatically comes on again, and repeat. So, knowing that, you might ask, why did I set the left one to 20 seconds, and the right to five? Well, like I mentioned, the whole purpose of the rest of the series is to repurpose the circuits. In Cracker Jack's video, he designed this for a clock. In this video, this is a different method for having automatic lights. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, if we take the rest of the power coming out of this electrical branch here, and I run it to these lights that I've hooked up here, and I turn it on, then you'll see what happens. But let me just explain first. Why did I pick 20 seconds and 5 seconds? Let's presume that on a vanilla Rust server, the day and night cycle, so the full 24 hour period, is about 1 hour. And that the night period is 15 minutes. Now, this may not actually be 100% correct, 
but let's just presume for hypothetical sake that it is. So if the day and night period is the one hour and the night period is 15 minutes, then 15 minutes is just a quarter of that time. So what I've done, I've shrunk those times down and this 20 second is representing the full day-night cycle, so a full 24-hour period. And this is just representing the nighttime period or the time period that the lights need to be on for. So essentially what is happening, this circuit is saying every single hour or every single day at exactly the same time the lights come on for an existing time and when the sun's coming up it switches off. Let me show you what I mean. So at the moment it's night time so to speak. Now the sun's rising, it switches off, the day is happening, this timer will move back around and it's coming around to sunset again. The sun starts to set, it gets dark inside your base and presto, the lights turn on again. Now is this the best solution for automatic lights in your base? Probably not. The reason being is every server, especially if you start playing modded or anything like that, has a different day-night cycle. Additionally, I found even on vanilla servers that it may not be exactly one hour to the second. So this is a little bit flawed. But that's not the whole purpose of this video. It's not to show you, hey, this is the best way to have your lights come on automatically every single day. This is to just get you thinking in a different way. A circuit that is designed for something specific may be actually useful in a different way. And this is going to be the rest of the series. Now, on top of what we've already talked about, about repurposing circuits, there's another useful skill to have and develop when you're playing around with the electrical components in Rust. And that is condensing the form factor. So, the circuit in front of me is spread out quite a bit. It's taking up quite a bit of real estate. And that may not work well in your base. The reason that I spread it out, however, is so I can, one, explain it to you guys properly, but also when I'm personally learning a circuit, I have enough space to make the wiring very clear to me, which gives me a better idea of what's going on in the circuit and why. Once I learn the circuit well, however, I understand what's going on, I like to try and challenge myself to condense it in different form factors. This could be within a one by one or a small triangle foundation with just some walls on it or something like these examples. So this is exactly the same circuit. This one I've condensed just onto a one by one wall in just a smaller form factor. And then this one I've condensed into a half wall taking up about half the real estate here. Is it anything special or amazing? Not really, but again, just like my reason for using electrical branches over splitters sometimes, it can just be about conserving energy, or in this case, space. So now we're going to apply what we've learned so far for essentially the same purpose, but just expanding on it a little bit. We're going to add some components to the existing circuit. I've got some doors here. I've already paired them to a door controller. I've got the electrical branch and I've hooked it, all the door controllers up to the branch out. What we're going to do is we're going to come over here. I'm going to place an electrical branch here. An electrical branch here. And a memory cell here. So now that we've added these new components, we just have to rewire a couple of things to produce the purpose that we want. I'm going to start with the power supply. I'm going to hook the electrical branch here up to our power supply. I'm going to take the power out and connect it to the switch. I'm going to take the branch out and take it to the memory cell. Next, I'm going to take this electrical branch out 
and take it down to the reset feature. I'm going to take the power in for the electrical branch and hook it up to the timer. And then I'm going to take the power out up here and connect it to the block pass-through. I'm also going to take the power out, which we previously didn't use on this electrical branch, and take it to the set feature. To get this working properly, we have to change a few different things. We need to configure this to 4, and this one to 5, and then we need to take this one to 22. I'll explain why in a moment, but it's just about giving everything enough power to function correctly. Next, we're going to take the output here, and take it across and hook it up to the electrical branch here. We're also going to connect this electrical branch, which I've done already. We're going to take the power out and connect it to this electrical branch. Additionally, I've also connected the power out of this electrical branch up to the last door here. So we're going to take this power in, which is the second door, and connect it to the other output of the memory cell, which is of course the inverted output. Now you can see, since there's power flowing at the moment, things are already starting to happen. Since the memory cell is set to zero, it's therefore outputting on the inverted output, which is powering these two door controllers. However, if we turn the rest of the circuit on, you'll see what happens. So I'm going to turn the rest of the circuit on, but first I just need to alter something. So I'm going to disconnect the two toggle functions of the timer, switch it on, and I'm going to change this timer to 10 seconds, and then I'm going to leave this one at 5. This gives a difference of 5 seconds, and you'll see why in a moment. Essentially, what I'm setting up is for every five seconds, the memory cell is going to be programmed to the different setting. And therefore, the doors are going to pulse. So now that I've hooked it up, you'll see how it functions. So what's happening here? You see that every five seconds when the output changes, there's a different setting put into the memory cell, which means that when it changes the setting, it changes its output. And since we have the outputs hooked up to two doors each, when power is cut from one circuit, it closes the door, and power is provided to another, it automatically opens it. Now, what's the application for this? I mean, it could be used in a lot of different ways. It could be used in a trap base, I've seen people create mazes or puzzles and it could be used in that sort of scenario. You could use any kind of configuration of duration of time, really, that you can come up with and you could make this more complicated if you wanted to as well. Again, this is just a proof of concept that you can take an existing circuit or idea change it just a little bit either by manipulating some of the settings that are in the actual components or adding a couple of components or of course both to create something completely different and perhaps more useful to your particular need. I hope this makes sense. If you have any questions hit me up in the comment. Don't forget to like and subscribe. If you didn't like it as well hit that thumbs down but otherwise I'd love to hear from you guys and we'll see you in the next one. Take care guys. Some you know you you know you you know you you know you love